The Transcontinental Railroad conquered the landscapes of the United States. Mountains, or any other geographic feature, were no longer obstacles to human travel. The railroad terminated in California. The West was a place of wild and yet untamed natural beauty. In 1892, the Angeles National Forest was created to preserve some of that natural beauty of California. It also made the mountain a tourist destination called Mount Low, which was named after Thaddeus Low, who built a railway to the forest. 1892, Low began to plan his railway. With the help of engineers, the mountain was graded by hand, and a route drawn from LA to Pasadena and from Pasadena into the mountains. The first challenge came with the incline to Mount Echo. The planned route had lots of small canyons all along it, which engineers had to cross, and every supply had to be brought in by hand. Lowe, who was an inventor, designed the cable system himself and included a new safety feature. Lowe opened the first three sections of his railway on July 4, 1894, including the very first ride on the incline to Mount Echo. The view was spectacular, and it quickly became a popular destination. But it was also one of the most technically advanced railways in the world, especially upon opening of the Alpine Division in 1896. To open, the conductor of the Alpine Division would tell patrons, We are now beginning the last three and a half miles of this trip, on which you will cross 18 bridges and pass around 127 curves, the longest piece of straight track being but 225 feet in length. Sounds like a theme park ride, doesn't it? We'll get to that. All these bridges and curves both accommodated the landscape and conquered it. For example, the granite gate was carved out of the toughest granite known to man at the time. Whereas the circular bridge mainly worked with its surrounding landscape, all of which added up to a mechanical conquer of the wilderness for people to enjoy but was it such a conquering after all? The railroad was one of the most advanced in its day, mainly due to the circular bridge, which was the very first bridge in the world designed for both curve and grade, meaning it circled around and went up the mountain at the same time. As the trolley approached it, the conductor informed riders the precipice to your right is a sheer drop of more than a thousand feet. But what happened to this tourist hotspot? In many ways, it was simply the climate which announced its demise. As Joan Didion writes, the climate is characterized by infrequent but violent extremes. Two periods of torrential subtropical rain. About 20 scattered days of the Santa Ana, which, with its incendiary dryness, invariably means fire. Though Didion writes nearly a hundred years after the heyday of Mount Lowe, her words nevertheless trace its demise. In 1900, the Echo Mountain House burned to the ground, and the mountain was frequently threatened by wildfires. In 1928, the Low Observatory was demolished by a windstorm. Wildfire strikes again, burning the Low Tavern in 1938. Finally, in 1938, the area was hit by massive flooding, which was so strong it washed away much of the track in the Alpine Division. Two years later, all of Echo Mountain is ablaze again, this time a result of vandals triggering a large fire. And in 1940, the Mount Low Incline and Alpine Division were sold to scrappers. The story goes that the track was sold as scrap to support the American war effort. Today, little remains of the Mount Low Railway in the clouds. 
Although Mother Nature tried to demolish the tourist spot, one man thought to revive it. Walt Disney. Disney, the Mount Low Railway represented the spirit of the American West. Men triumphing over harsh landscape and reveling in its sharp natural beauty. This dream never came to fruition, however. Disney built Disneyland instead, ultimately not taking climate into account doomed the railway. Yet we as Angelinos continue to build freeways and other infrastructure without regard to our extreme climate. In 2018, we saw wildfires ravage the landscape, with subsequent rain creating mudslides which wiped out the 101 freeway for over a week. Human exceptionalism over the landscape is nothing new, but were we to work with our surroundings instead of against it, we could preserve structures like the low railway and continue its mission to provide access to the beautiful surrounding wilderness of Los Angeles. So the next time you're enjoying Thunder Mountain Railroad, remember the original Railway in the Clouds. Mm -hmm.